The Gaza Israel war is indeed horrific and deeply shocking. As a follower of Jesus, a practicing Christian, I am deeply grieved and also angry about all the bloodshed and the many innocent lives that are lost in Gaza, Israel, and various other conflicts. As I was praying for those who suffer, the question came to mind what would Jesus do? In the current precarious times dominated by wars and rumors of wars, social media has made it easy to just follow the masses. Many feel compelled to hate, condemn, demonstrate, boycott businesses, even plot to kill others. What are followers of Jesus, practicing Christians, to do? Here is a summary of what Jesus would do, judging from what he did in very similar situations in the past. Let us do the same. Suffer, be compassionate and weep with the suffering. Love, in practical ways, instead of hate. Oppose religious rather than political leaders. Turn towards God, not away from Him, in times of chaos and unanswered questions. Pray for governments and leaders. Obey authorities unless they make you disobey the commandments of God. Help those in need. Share the gospel. Here is a summary of it. The eternal kingdom of God is where the story begins in Genesis, chapter 1 to 2, and where the story ends in Revelation, chapter 21 to 22. It is where the relationship between God, humans, and creation, and between humans and creation, is at peace, safe, sound, complete, right, just and good. In between are currently the kingdoms of the world. These intruders are governed by belief systems, such as liberalism, socialism, communism, Islam, democracy, capitalism, colonialism, globalism and many more. All have common characteristics, like, broken relationships with God and one another, oppressors, oppressed, greed. They all have a beginning and will come to an end. Here is how the kingdom of God breaks into the kingdoms of the world. In the Bible, also known as Torah, Zabor and Injil, God has revealed himself and his will as follows, he is absolutely holy. All of us have failed to keep some of God's commandments, such as not to lie, steal, be greedy, proud, lust after women, etc. The punishment for such selfish behavior that brings dishonor upon God and people is physical death and eternal separation from him in hell. God requires justice but also offers to be the justifier because he loves us. Therefore, he took the sentence for sin upon himself in Jesus and died on the cross for it. There he paid the ultimate price that we all deserved, but could never have paid ourselves. Afterwards he rose again from the dead on the third day. On Christmas we celebrate the fact, not the exact date, that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. He lived a sinless life, was suffering with the people, performed many miracles and taught his followers to be just. When it comes to the end-time issue of the State of Israel, Christians have different opinions. Just like Islamic scholars who disagree on the nature and order of some events, Christian experts too differ regarding the end-time sequence and the meaning of Bible prophecy. Nevertheless, all Christians are called by the same scriptures to treat everyone justly. The Christian faith is unique in that Jesus has revealed God as a loving, perfect, heavenly Father who suffers with his children. Even those of us whose earthly fathers were disappointing, know how a perfect father should be. In all other faiths God is distant and absent because suffering is beneath him. The gospel announces the real king and the real kingdom. You and I are invited to pick sides and participate. Start by repenting and believing in the Jesus described here. Be prepared for suffering in your efforts to stand up for truth and bringing about justice. It is worth it. The best is yet to come. For all the sources, questions, and comments find out more at